right. So, I'm here at the Greenleaf Cemetery in uh, Brownwood, Texas, and I am here at a very special historic site, which is the resting place of one of the greatest, most influential American writers of all time, Mr. Robert E. Howard. And I'm here with a good buddy of mine. His name, his name is Karsten. On Discord, he goes by Muscle Struts. And uh, I drove a pretty long ways to get here. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty spiritual moment for me. I had a camera and a tripod, but I've been having some uh, technical difficulties with it. And what is this? Somebody left a notebook here? Might be, uh... What is that? Interesting. What is this? Thank you. Yeah, someone's uh, personal memento, it seems. They left it on the road. Oh. Lovely. They were lovely and pleasant in their lives and in their death. They were not divided. Yeah. It's a real shame what happened with him and his parents. Anybody watching this uh, who don't know, uh, this guy, he, uh, he shot himself because of, um, because of uh, his mother slipped into a coma due to a terminal illness. Tubercul was it? I thought it was something else. I knew she had contracted tuberculosis at some point. I don't know if that is uh, what caused her to eventually fall into a coma that she would not wake up from. Yeah. Hmm. That's a shame. But yeah. But he was with a. He did have a girlfriend at the time. Or no, this was before he shot himself, uh, named Novelin Price. Mm -hmm. yeah. She she, uh, she lived on, and she went on to have a nice, long, and happy life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not all not all bad. <laughs> so, um, I think I might read a little bit of uh, poetry later on. I'm gonna cut this camera off. I think I'm just gonna read a, a poem right next to this gravestone. You know, just to kind of pay respects, and he's he's going to be the one to record it. So, see you in a little bit. Solomon Kane's homecoming. The white gulls wheeled above the cliffs. The air was slashed with foam. The long tides moaned along the strand when Solomon Cain came home. He walked in silence, strange and dazed, through the little Devon town. His gaze, like a ghost's come back to life, roamed up the streets and down. The people followed wonderingly to mark his spectral stare, and in the tavern silently they thronged about him there. He heard as a man hears in a dream, the worn old rafters creak, and Solomon lifted his drinking jack and spoke as a ghost might speak. There sat Sir Richard Grenville once, in smoke and flame he passed, and we were one to fifty-three, but we gave them blast for blast. From crimson dawn to crimson dawn we held the dawns at bay. The dead lay littered on our decks, our masts were shot away. We beat them back with broken blades till crimson ran the tide. Death thundered in the cannon smoke when Richard Grenville died. We should have blown her hull apart and sunk beneath the main. The people saw upon his wrists the scars of the racks of Spain. 
Where is Bess? said Solomon Cain. Woe that I caused her tears. In the quiet churchyard by the sea she has slept these seven years. The sea wind moaned at the window pane and Solomon bowed his head. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust and the fairest fade, he said. His eyes were mystical deep pools that drowned unearthly things, and Solomon lifted up his head and spoke of his wanderings. Mine eyes have looked on sorcery in the dark and naked lands, horror born of the jungle gloom and the death on the pathless sands. And I have known a deathless queen in a city old as death, where towering pyramids of skulls her glory witnesseth. Her kiss was like an adder's fang in the sweetness Lilith had, and her red-eyed vassals howled for blood in that city of the mad. And I have slain a vampire shape that sucked a black king white, and I have roamed through grisly hills where dead men walked at night, and I have seen heads fall like fruit in the slaver's barracoon, and I have seen winged demons fly all naked in the moon. My feet are weary of wandering, and age comes on apace. I fain I would dwell in Devon now, forever in my place. The howling of the ocean pack came whistling down the gale, and Solomon Cain threw up his head like a hound that snuffs a trail. A down the wind, like a running pack, the hounds of the ocean bayed. And Solomon Cain rose up again in his girt, and girt his Spanish blade. In his strange cold eyes a vagrant gleam grew wayward and blind and bright, and Solomon put the people by and went into the night. A wild moon rode the wild white clouds, the waves and white crests flowed, when Solomon Cain went forth again and no man knew his road. They glimpsed him etched against the moon where clouds on hilltop thinned, they heard an eerie echoed call that whistled down the wind.